Hey everybody, Doreen here, and welcome to another episode of Dream Daddy. Uh, um, we're in the house with Amanda right now, um, and she's making us breakfast, I think, is, is what's happening here. Alright, so we have cereal for breakfast, and uh, spend the morning putting together furniture. Uh, Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk. I'm pretty sure there, it was supposed to be a bookcase. Uh, so excited for you for the cookout today. We're having a cookout apparently. That's the thing we're doing today. Um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to beef up my grilling skills. <clears throat> I'll see as a this as a learning opportunity if I can snake some hot grill tips. I think we could consider it a success. Uh, don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food. And hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. That's what you are. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Huh. A social butterfly, that is. I'm speaking. Not a literal butterfly. Do not be confused. I do not believe you are, in fact, a man fly. I do, in fact, mean socially. Not socialist. Socially. We better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Late is not cool, unless you're being fashionable, in which case, be as late as you want. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Hey, me and Amanda, same wavelength right here. Uh, who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? Grilling is all about timing, okay? Grilling is all about cooking in general. It's all about timing and preparedness. So if anything, a cookout is the place you should be on time the most. Ah, uh, you know what? We're going early just because you said that. I head off for the door and a man it reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate for the grill. C grill cookout. We're bringing veggies to a cookout. Alright, well we didn't want to risk burning the house again. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people. And the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air like a dog ba flying through the air ba made of meat. Ba ba da -da. What else would a dog be made out of? Jesus Christ. <laughs> small, small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. See? I told you. It's all about timing. It's all about timing preparedness. If we were late, we would have been super late because everyone else was early. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Must be a lot of vegetarians in the in this grill out. <clears throat> Yo, Joseph, what's up? I wait to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over. Open arms wide. Arms open wide. As if he's going to embrace me, even though I'm a stranger to him. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. This, I mean, this guy looks like he's a fucking vampire. You know who he looks like? He looks like, what's his face from Twilight? Carlisle. Carlisle? Whatever the dad is. He looks like the fucking dad. Look, he's got little vampire fangy things right here. See those little vampire fangs? He's got some creepy eyes. And he's got some fucking Count Dracula hair. Like, he's gonna fucking eat us, guys. He's going to fucking eat us. We got invited here because we are, in fact, the main course. Some Hannibal shit. And I am both thrilled and scared. Oh, and you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, the eldest. Does he also look like a demon? He does. Okay. Hi, I'm Chris. He didn't even say his name. How rude of him. Uh, this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. What is up with this motherfucker and Chris's? Chris, Christian, Christy. Jesus. Okay. Okay, am I wrong in assuming there is something evil about this family? Look at this motherfucker and look at these two kids. Not only do they all match, but they all have dead looks in their eyes. They are six and they look like the fucking twins from The Shining. They stare creepily and say nothing. I'm gonna die today. This is where we die. This is where we die. Then of course there's our youngest, Krish. It's not even a fucking name. He just wanted something that sounds like Chris. Hey, guess what? You could have spelled Chris without the H. Hey, what? Fucking idiot. Wait, where's Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Mary. Oh! Ho ho! What a plot twist! Plot twist! 
What a plot twist. The, the slut Mary is his wife. She looks like a vampire too. Are there vampires in this game? I am, I am seriously convinced there may be vampires in this game. Like they look like fucking vampires. Jesus Christ, but she wouldn't be wearing a cross. She wouldn't be wearing a cross, that's... Hmm. And how could I forget my lovely wife Mary who tried to fuck you in the bar last week? Joseph pecks her on the cheek, she smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? It's three in the afternoon, why is he in bed? I'll have to look for him. What? You'll have to. Joseph takes a moment to regain his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Daddy, and his daughter, Amanda. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that needs to tend to. Oh, I know, Mary, you are a drunk. Uh, Amanda, don't love her, she is a slut. Uh, nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. I've never met you before. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. Uh, it takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. That would probably be the best idea, Daddy Ross. Um, ha, 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 my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you too enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you, as they are also excited to meet my whore of a wife. Um, here, let me introduce you around. Hey, Daddy, have you met Brian? Are we playing Have You Met Ted? I love Have You Met Ted. It's one of my favorite games to play. Yo, Brian, come here. Oh, hey, Brian. What's up? He's like the hacker man, and he's like the hacker man best friend in every movie. Uh, a man in a loud Hawaiian shirt jogs up to me. I'm in. Um, hey, uh, I'm Brian. <clears throat> Brian, this is Daddy. He just moved into the neighborhood. Hello, I am... Oh, okay. Well, pleased to meet you, too. I, I don't want to put it anywhere. Nope. Oh, don't pull me into a handshake. Oh, bye. Oh, God, you're so sweaty. Why are you so sweaty? I let out a small squeak after my hand bones have been ground to dust by this behemoth of a ginger man that has just appeared in this cookout. Not much of a handshake guy, huh? I guess I'm more of a hug. Don't. No, Daddy Ross, no. Uh, which house did you move into? The ranch style one in the cold de sac. We're, all, we're currently in the cold de sac, Daddy. We're, cur we're currently still in the cold de sac. This is your neighbor. You could have just said, I moved into the house directly next door. Oh, the one that's just like mine, but smaller. <laughs> yes, that kind of hurts. Is he trying to one up me? Because he sure has succeeded already, as you can tell. Uh, my instinctive dad competitiveness kicks into gear. Smaller houses are safer. If there were, say, a tornado, a small house is lowered to the ground. A tornado in Maple Bay. It never hurts to be prepared for tornadoes, you know. Oh, let me introduce you to my daughter. Um, a kid peeks out from behind Brian, but she came from the right. What? Um, this is Daisy. Is it because of the freckles and the yellow eyes? Why does she have yellow eyes? I'm pretty sure your daughter has Lyme disease, dude. You should probably get that fucking checked. Um, hi, what grade are you in? Fifth grade. All right. Okay, we're actually trying to get her to skip sixth grade. Not to brag, but she's pretty smart. Oh, come on. It's fucking elementary school. She can color inside the lines. She can get, skip a grade. Not to brag exactly what bragging is. Amanda's smart, too. Yeah, she skipped four grades. She didn't even go to high school. She graduated in eighth grade, went directly to college for photography. Uh, well, I'll be around the party if you feel like saying hey later. You got it. Let me introduce you to Damien. Oh, I've met Damien. Damien has been inside of me. <laughs> That's an awkward thing to say. Joseph Beck is a tall man who got the guitar to the conversation. Oh, not who I think. Uh, I was thinking of Robert. Robert's been inside of me. This guy is legit a vampire. Are they both vampires? Is this an interview for a vampire? Is this fucking Tom Cruise and this is Brad Pitt? Because that's what I feel like I'm in right now. Good eve, friends. Damien, this is our new neighbor, Daddy. Ah, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows, his cape flowing before his face in an odd fashion. He's actually not a vampire because it's the middle of the day. He wouldn't be able to be outside right now. If you're ever interested, I would bring my greatest pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. 
Um, he's gonna eat me. He's gonna just suck all my blood right out of my dick. I mean, out of my neck. Yeah, that sounds rad. Splendid. Well, I'll be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross again. Oh, wow, damn, what a classy dude. The cape really ties the class in together, you know, like what I always say. You ain't classy if you ain't walking around with uh, red eyes and a cape. Uh, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope both of you enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. Pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with the baked goods. Ugh. I don't want to. I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you gonna party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Me and Daddy both agree. Small talk sucks ass. It's the worst. All you ever do is talk about the weather. We get it. It's hot. They're gonna want to talk about the weather. <laughs> Why am I so similar to him? Uh, Go, do it, make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child as a social function? That's just cruel. This plate of cookies is my new dad, bye. That hurts, that hurt my soul. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Yo, coffee barista, what's up? I have not seen you in a day. Oh dang, Robert's here. I can still remember the feel of his five inch. <laughs> Never mind, I ain't even going down that road right now. Uh, that guy who keeps trying to one up me. That mysterious goth guy. We get it, we're meeting all the daddies. And isn't that Amanda's teacher who. Oh, fuck. What's up, Craig? Do you bring your baby everywhere, or do they only draw one design for you in this game? But wait a second, all these people live in their cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Let's talk to Joseph and Damien. Again, the vampire bros. Lestat and, um... It was Lestat and, uh... Ah, oh, man, I love that movie. How did I forget? Actually, I think I'm gonna watch that after I'm done recording this. I think I'm gonna go watch Interview with a Vampire after I'm done with this. I have it downstairs. You know, it, it, it is a damn fine movie. <clears throat> it was Lestat and, uh, fuck, this is gonna bug me. Pause! Tequila, 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 Louis! Louis! It was Louis. I knew it was some common, like, fucking name. It was Louis. Okay. I spot Joseph chatting with Damien by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. They're probably talking about how they're going to murder us and drink all of our blood. So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Well, because pink is not my color. Where do I even start? The house says warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood and complements the crimson interior. Perfectly. Uh, it's definitely an interesting choice. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. Daddy, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Greetings once again, Daddy. Do, uh, do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved, into the, moved in the other day. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Oddly so, in fact. Why is everyone so friendly? Typically, when you move into a new neighborhood and everyone is super friendly, it's the start of a horror movie where you're gonna die because they have some secret society happening in the background that ends with your organs being ripped out. Or summoning some kind of evil demon from beyond. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Hi, it's... Damien, right? My name's Amanda. Ah, at your service. What a pleasure it is to meet you. Um. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. What the fuck? Now he's a magician? God damn it. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Amanda, stop flirting with a vampire. Ah, uh, my, do you know how to treat a lady? Oh, here comes the fucking children of the corn. Hi, Christian and Christy. Like... Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins keep kids appear. Ah, uh, they are speaking in unison. That's 
fucking creepy. Hey, won't you come play with us? No, no, I won't come play with you. No, no. Um, anyways, come play with us forever. Guys, enough of the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. It's a little weird. And he's feels like I'm catching on to, to his ruse. Where do you think they got that from? There, it pops into the conversation, wine in hand, naturally. That doesn't look like wine, that looks like blood. That is way too crimson. I uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. I think I might have taped over a uh, VeggieTales VHS with the shiny. <laughs> Who knows? I called that. I called that reference. Uh, she takes another sip of her wine. Okay, we get it. You're an alcoholic. Jesus Christ. Where is Krish? Wasn't he with you? She is the worst mother ever. Spends her nights at the bars picking up dudes. Spend her days drunk losing her children. Uh, you had him a moment ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Yeah. Ate my first time to the rodeo. Oh, I know. I know. It's my fourth. Uh-huh. I've squeezed four little... We don't care, Mary. How many little Chris's you've squeezed out of you? Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Chris? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine. Mary, go find Chris, please. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off to find more wine. Dad, can we go? Ah, oh, it's this little fucking punk boy. Ah, Lucian, I have I introduced you to daddy yet. Hey, it's that punk from Amanda School. I remember you fucking... Fucking, fucking, fucking smashing pumpkins. Why did I go with smashing pumpkins? It just, it was the first thing that popped in my head. It was just the first thing. Uh, whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. No, I'm not an elder of the Vampire Council. I'm sorry. You're mistaking me with some other Bob Ross looking motherfucker. I don't know. Lucien bows. Whatever. Sir. Okay, Lucian bows again. We get it. We get it. You guys are super, like, vampire-y. Uh, Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? You don't eat meat? Are you vegetarian? Yep. And this is some Twilight shit right here. Vegetarian vampires? Mm -hmm. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous-type people as blood lappers. Yeah, He's so wanting to not be found out as a vampire that he's pretending to be a vegetarian so people don't suspect him of drinking blood. Dad, that's really interesting. Damien Joseph turns to the girl. Just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. Can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo, man? Uh, so he was in the Navy? Want to see mine? Nope. Lucian pulls back the rubber base that's revealing a lopsided 666 of black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Jesus fucking Christ, he's so edgy. Oh my god. Lucian, we talked about this later. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? How does he not know? Your wife is super religious slut. Like, how do you not know what that is? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Sure. Sure. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get tattoos is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. <laughs> I wonder what he did before preaching. Well, he has an anchor tattoo, so he was probably in the Navy. That's going to be my guess. I'm not entirely sure. All right, let's talk to Robert and Brian. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened last night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. He's going to pretend nothing even happened. Daddy, how the heck are you? Settle into the new neighborhood, all right? Uh, oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. The game, the game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Daddy, have you met Robert yet? Yes, I believe we met briefly. Very briefly. Hey, Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. 
Robert robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh God, what does this mean? Ha, uh, how's it going? It's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. Great, look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know. Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? No, he doesn't. He was not animated to blink. Seriously, he... Oh, oh, oh he blinked! Uh, yep. Um, cool, cool, cool. That's cool, 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 cool. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until... Uh, we gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh, no, the ghost locked the door. Daisy and Amanda run up to us. Thank God for that icebreaker. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh, then hit the brakes, I guess, and then we'll get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyways, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. That's good. That's my kind of thing, that cold-blooded stuff right there. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. I knew we were going to talk about eating people today. I knew we were going to talk, e talk about eating people. Wait a second. Are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers? Mm-hmm. Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially the episode where Caleb hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending the spirits after him. Yeah, such quality reality television. All right, Daisy, I found us a couple bugs. We're gonna make a great meal, lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. Ugh. Ugh. Fuck, I needed a coffee break. Hey, it looks like Robert's got a little tattoo too, a little sun tattoo right there. But there's a whole table of food right over there, okay. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Have a life. Don't be such a loser. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go kindle for a fire. Okay, and Robert sneaks away. But not an actual fire, because we're playing pretend. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait. Where did Robert go? I skim the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does he not want to talk? It's a little awkward after his one night stand pops out of a barbecue for his friends. It's a little weird. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert induced haze. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Huh, so that's nice that he's not trying to one up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There we go. There we go. Back to being a douche. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at uh, Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Ho ho ho. Kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required by law to love them. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play day for them. Let's not. Mm -mm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. All right. Let's talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. I don't remember Hugo. Oh, right. Hugo's the teacher. All right. This looks like I'm about to get gangbanged. They're all giving me weird fuck you eyes. Except for him. He just looks confused. Mr. Hugo, at least. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks smiling. Oh, sorry. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they are a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of a time and place. And to try to take something like, say, the Rocco period. Rococo period compared to the postmodernism in America. They're completely disregarding the context in which the work of art is created Man Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me Craig leans in dude. I have no idea what's happening um, Let's talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig who seems a little more attentive to my existence Maybe it has to do with the fact that we're old college friends Whew. 
How'd resistance training go in the other day? It looks like you're still doing it because you're still in your workout clothes at this barbecue with your baby hanging from your chest. Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, tiny bro? <laughs> tiny bro. Uh, Greg crabs River's arm and waves them around. You can do it. Oh, look how cute. This is a cute little baby, dude. This is a cute little baby. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Really. So worth it. Uh, Greg grabs her with his arms again and waves them around. I'm also sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. <laughs> How are you settling in? Uh, almost done. We're almost done settling. There's still a few odds and ends to care of before I could really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah. <clears throat> My goal is for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Oh. Oh. Oh, I've been talking a lot. I've been talking a lot, man. Hey, she takes after her dad. Daddy, how do you like in the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's super friendly. Oh, I need a second. Oh, I need a second. Oh, it's so much reading. Oh, it's so much reading. It seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. <clears throat> uh, Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them. I already read that. What is it, sweetheart? Uh, it's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let me put it on. Matt takes a flower crown and places it on top of his head. Oh, that's cute. That actually does look good on him. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Wow, ha, hey, daddy, this is my daughter. Hello, daughter, I'm Carmesita. Cool, Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends, okay, daughter, mom. Uh, yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and your teacher. <sighs> oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yep, ironically, everyone in the city lives in this one cul-de-sac. Still gonna get me that overdue turp paper? Haha, <laughs> great seeing ya. Goodbye. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. <laughs> She's great. She learned the finger gun move from me, I'm very proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? What did he just say? Is this sweet man Chaco? Uh, Hugo looks around the party and must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Why is he saying Sweet Man Chago? I don't know what that means. Ernest Hemingway Vega? He named his son Ernest Hemingway? Oh my god. Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of a cigarette, then flicks it into the gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not... Envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried uh, to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. When the barbecue we had before that, he actually burnt down half the yard. And then it spread into my lawn and burned down half my yard, too. Hugo walks over to us. Oh, look, it's a little, little punk child with his hoodie and his acne. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Daddy, this is my son, Ernest Hemingway. Uh, hello. Ernest looks away, sulking his hand shoved deep in his pocket. Playing some pool, I see. Uh, Hugo nudged him impatiently. Hey, nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter, Ernest? Okay, I'm in the eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you, man. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for our failing economy. It's a little true. Ernest! Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. Yep. 
He seems nice, I guess. That's what I'll say, even though it's not true. Hugo puts his hand, his head in, in, in his hands and sighs. I'm sorry, he's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, or any of us cool dads, it's even possible to be a cool dad. What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See that right there? You can't say that. That ain't cool. My kids think I'm cool. That's because they're three. But for how long, Craig? How long do you get to be the cool dads? I, uh, I don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against. And accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. You kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool because I am cool. Yeah, I yell across the room to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways, wouldn't it? Whew, this is a lot of reading. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. It's college when that happens. Don't let us eat up your time, Daddy. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Uh, without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and goes to work. With the greatest of ease, he patties, sets patties on the grills, flourishes as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen in my life. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties, and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the daddy takes notice in a crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful crabby patty technique. You probably didn't know this, daddy, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Oh, he's ungrillable. That is not even a pun. We'll try to get on his level, but I just can't keep catch up. Ha! Huh. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Mustard, keep, we keep talking about this. We can't just appreciate the artist. I've never seen him make a mistake. I love all these puns, guys. I love all these dad puns. Okay, we need to stop this. This is getting too cheesy. Please, stop. All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Ha! Whew! Whew! Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. The num num in my tum tum. That's what I say. Amanda is so wild. It's so wild that all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Especially with all the butt sex that's going to go on soon. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. She decides to get into babysitting games. She'll already make a killing. Hey, why don't you add us on dad book? The fuck is dad book? Dad book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all in on it. So if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. So this is the equivalent of the cell phone mechanic in all dating sims. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmesita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Huh. <sighs> Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me, so, you know, that's always good. It's good. Sweet. If I can't, sweetie, if I can impart any whiz, sort of wisdom upon you right now and not that this was a bad situation, but if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation, always look for the silver lining. The silver lining get you through the other side. We ate rock and burgers today, and it was good. Amen. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will, if I ever forgot how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Oh. 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 Man, I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Huh. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted. I'll be home before midnight. You got it. Okay. Make good choices. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that. I'll never do that. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh, 
My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. He just wanted to spend time with his daughter. I'm gonna throw a party. A real rager. All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. I'll see if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's nothing. It's looking tight, and you may just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door. I'll get in no problem. Uh, just relaxing. Yeah, fun. Um, watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. Flop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Love me some Gordon Ramsay, fake Gordon Ramsay television. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. Oh, man, I'm fucking hungry now. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Just like making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritious substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time. I was like, blazed through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind. And also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. Okay, that might have been the Ramsey one. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander to the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand. I'm sure she'll respond soon unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't get... Doesn't respond soon because they definitely taught her better than text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. Check my watch again, and then my phone, nothing. Huh? Oh. What's up? Half an hour passes, now I'm really worried. The episode of Gavin Chapman Meat Hell are not only uh, assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the room waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decided to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. Can't help but think of all the awful things that could be happening to her. This is getting sad. Oh God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup, sweetie, thank God you're safe. Oh, yep. Um, but now that she's, I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't she answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh. Whoops, I guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda, on! Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now. Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I'm about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to college. Off to school, are you? <sighs> oh. Oh. Hey, I have a right to be concerned. You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you... A play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You should, uh, you shouldn't, uh, I'm running out of breath. You shouldn't even be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You're, you really scared me. Just please don't do that again. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brewed some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. Okay, that's the end of the day, so that's where I'm going to leave it off for today. Oh, that was longer than I expected. I was planning on only doing like a 15 to 20 minute episode, but the 20 minute mark hit as we were at the barbecue, and I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to do a long one again. Uh, <clears throat> so, thank you guys all for watching. The game's really good so far. It hasn't really had much dating sim aspects to it. So far, it's just been a straight story. The story's really good, and the writing's really good. Um, I'm just wondering when it's going to pick up, because I'm already three hours into the game almost, and nothing's happened, which, you know, is fine by me, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys all for watching. Um, make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Is there a share? Yeah, there is. Wow. Oh my god, I'm tired. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Also, make sure to check out our live streams every day at 4 o'clock Pacific time. Alright, you guys have a good one. Later! <laughs>